United Nations officials are calling for an independent investigation into the deadly blast at a hospital in Gaza. President Biden says the Department of Defense has shown him intelligence suggesting Israel is not responsible. Israel has blamed it on a misfired rocket by Islamist jihad terrorists. President Biden also announced Egypt has agreed to open the Rafah crossing to allow up to 20 trucks of humanitarian aid to enter Gaza. The president says the crossing was damaged by Israeli airstrikes, but aid could come by Friday. Dan Raviv joins me now. Dan is an author, a Middle East news analyst, and a former CBS News correspondent. Dan, it's good to see you. It's been a while. Indeed, Jeff. Hi. Hi. Uh, so uh, you've been covering this region for decades. Um, what? What has surprised you the most so far? I'd have to say it's the intelligence and border security failure of the Israelis. The Israelis are thought of as the best in the Middle East, certainly, when it comes to security and military strength. Yet on the morning of October 7th, they didn't know Hamas was going to attack. And because Hamas was able to punch right through that border fence, it's amazing. More than 2,000 Hamas and other fighters from Gaza came through and then committed terrorist acts of the worst kind, murdering, you've heard, more than 1,400 Israelis and taking about 200 hostages. I'm just amazed that Israel made that mistake, Jim. I think a reckoning will happen about that once some of this conflict begins, about what, how intelligence, how the IDF failed in all right. of this. Um, as far as Israel's strategy right now goes. How does this, I mean, every one of these conflicts is a little bit different, but it's all in, in a way about the same thing and what people want here. What, what, what is surprising you about or not surprising you about the way Israel is advancing? Well, this Israeli plan to go into Gaza is bigger than anything the Israelis have done before. Israel left the Gaza Strip in 2005, pulling out soldiers and settlers. Then there was a civil war between Palestinian factions and Hamas uh, came out on top. So they've been running the Gaza Strip for 16 years. From time to time, there have been well, many wars between Gaza and Israel. Sometimes Israel's army has reluctantly gone in. It's been bloody. People have died. There have been some hostages taken in the past. But this is bigger than ever. And Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has publicly said he's going to end it this time. He's going to drive Hamas out of power. Now, it hasn't happened yet, the ground invasion, but the pounding from the air has started. President Biden visited, and the Israelis feel that he gave them a green light, but with caution. A green light to go in, but then comes the yellow light. Don't go too far. Don't kill too many people. Israel's going to try somehow to topple Hamas as quickly as they can and maybe save some hostages if they can. You wrote an article, Dan, saying that after the conflict is over, whenever it's over, that Gaza should be handed to the Palestinian Authority. What, why should Gaza be handed to the, where they've, they haven't necessarily succeeded all that well in the past? Yeah, well, as opposed to some outsiders, because no one's going to accept the hot potato called the Gaza Strip. Egypt didn't want it back when Egypt and Israel made a peace treaty in the late 1970s. So it's been part of a future Palestinian state that obviously doesn't yet exist. And Hamas doesn't accept Israel. And Israel now is going to topple Hamas. At least that's the goal. Uh, so I think the most reasonable thing to try to do is persuade the Palestinian Authority. You know, the late Yasser Arafat's faction, Al-Fatah, that, that, that sits in Ramallah in the West Bank. Persuade them to come back to the Gaza Strip. They were kicked out by Hamas in 2007. Persuade them to come back, give them a promise of a lot of money and investment. They can open the port. Uh, they're relatively moderate. They've made deals with Israel. So there's a possibility there. Maybe. Or, Dan, or Dan, is there anybody else new or different on the horizon who maybe could oversee Gaza? Well, like I say, Egypt wouldn't. Uh, how about a consortium of Arab states who together would run it? A U.N. peacekeeping force. Uh, those things are not going to happen. They don't want anything to do I with Gaza either. Potato. Well, like I said, it's the hot potato for foreigners. I think the only hope is a, is a new Palestinian government. I think it should be based on the PA to give them more legitimacy. You know, their leader, Mahmoud Abbas, in his, is in his late 80s, refused to meet Wednesday with President Biden because of the horrible explosion at the Gaza hospital. For now, the PA, Palestinian Authority, is not playing ball. But I think it's the only hope if Hamas is removed and there's a vacuum. Dan, you've been on plenty of these trips. I mean, it's, it's very unusual for the president to come back um, on board Air Force One on his way back and talk to the press about the trip he just made, as controversial 
as that trip was, even though he was only on the ground um, for a few hours. And now we wait for this pretty big address tomorrow night. What are you expecting? Uh, right, his big Thursday night speech. I've got to say that what President Biden is showing is that he really cares. He has in the past described himself as a Zionist, saying you don't have to be Jewish to believe that the Jewish people need their own country. So it's emotional for him, and he plans to link it with aid to Ukraine. The administration is going to ask Congress to approve maybe even $100 billion for Israel and Ukraine so that Republicans who are reluctant to help Ukraine uh, are not reluctant to help Israel, and maybe they'll have to swallow the whole package. The other political goal, of course, is President Biden wanted to look vigorous and strong by traveling to a war zone. It worked out for he, him so far. He may care, um, Dan, but as we talked about with Margaret earlier, he hasn't paid a whole lot of attention to the Middle East in his presidency so far. Is that hurting him? Well, we know the old line, which is that you can try to ignore the Middle East, but it won't ignore you. It comes back. Is it hurting him now? No. As the former chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, as Barack Obama's vice president for eight years, Joe Biden knows the region. He knows the players, so he's got the knowledge base. It was just a hope that the United States would concentrate on China, would try to concentrate on uh, on running up against a rival called Russia, and then Russia invaded Ukraine. I mean, things in foreign affairs are extremely tough right now, but it's something Biden says he's fully prepared for in a difficult world, Jeff. Okay, Dan Raviv, really good to see you, Dan. Thanks so much. Pleasure.